Hey friends, are you ready for a epic crochet hook review? Stay tuned. Hello, I'm Karen Valori Miguel, owner and founder of Canada Bliss, handmade crochet hats and accessories, and you've reached my YouTube channel, the coolest place for crochet business, handmaker tools, and talk. And if you're tuning in today, it's probably because you're interested in an epic crochet hook review. Before we get started, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you think some of my content is pretty all right. <laughs> Today, we're doing something that I promised we were going to do, and I'm looking at some of the top crochet hooks there are out there and comparing it with my favorite, the boy hook. And the way this came about was in one of my live streams, I was talking about how I've always used the boy hook. And a lot of people use the boy hook as well, but over the years, I've rarely paid much attention into switching my crochet hook because I've always been more preoccupied with just, you know, building my product-based business and promoting it, making things. I even got my crocheters boy hooks whenever I take them on as crocheters. But now in meeting all of you through YouTube and building this wonderful online community, you guys have enlightened me to try new things. <laughs> so, I have embarked on getting the top crochet hooks. I've researched and got word from you guys and I've also read what are the most commonly used, highly acclaimed uh, crochet hooks. And over the course of the next videos, I'm going to review all of them. In this series of crochet hook videos, I'm going to be reviewing my favorite boy hook, Susan Bates, Clover, Tulip, Pearls, as well as the Addy. I have another one that's on the way and it, if, if it arrives before I'm done shooting the entire series, I'm going to add it to the end. But in today's series video, I will be covering the boy hook versus Susan Bates versus Furls. So let's jump in. Okay, so in this crochet review, I tried to be as objective as possible. So what I did was I used the same yarn the same gauge of crochet hook and I crocheted the same project with each and every one of them so I can make a more or less objective opinion. So before we jump right in, I wanted to go through a quick anatomy of what a general crochet hook looks like. So in any crochet hook, there's a head, a throat, the shank, the grip, and in the grip, it'll they'll probably be like a thumb rest and then the handle. In each of the crochet hooks that I'll be reviewing, I'm going to be touching on the ergonomic handle, if they have one, because that's a biggie for me. The hook, does it glide in and out of the stitches, that kind of thing. It's maneuverability, the cost, and then any other noticeable attributes about that particular hook. So these are the things that I'll be touching on. Now the first one I'm going to cover is the boy hook because the boy hook is the hook that I use and that is this hook right here. Now the whole thing is made of steel and the noticeable attribute with the boy hook and the head is that the throat of the crochet hook narrows as it approaches the head from the shank. So the shank is like slightly thicker than the throat of the crochet hook. That's typical with boy. And the weight of it is like pretty standard, nice sturdy steel hook. They don't bend easily. So this is the hook I've, I've been using for a very, very long time. However, in the past decade, I'd had a lot of hand problems. So having an ergonomic handle has always been super duper important to me. And the reason I've stuck with boy for so long is because they have this ergonomic attachment, this handle right here that you can remove and put on to any boy crochet hook. And it's easily applied by putting on like this little plunger onto the hook so that their boy hooks will fit into each and every one of these like with these handles. And for me, this handle removed the ergonomic factor of comfort from the hook because it allowed me to keep a nice open grip there's like the tackiness of the handle doesn't slip. If my hands do get sweaty or whatever, it doesn't slip and you can keep crocheting. The only drawback to this is that you have to pay for a new handle whenever this one wears out. How does this wear out? Many, many times 
the end pops off. If you take it off and put it on a whole bunch of other handles over time, this plastic end will rip. It'll rip off. So I don't know if you've used one of these for long enough where you've ripped them off, but I've bought about 10 of these and I've um, ripped about four off and I just keep buying them because this is what fits my hand. So that is why I use a boy hook and why I've stayed with it for so long. Recently, people have asked me why I don't use Susan Bates because it's so similar, but they say it's like better than boy. So I didn't quite know why it would be, but what I've noticed about it was that the throat of the Susan Bates hook doesn't narrow around the head. And for me, before I started crocheting with this, I thought, okay, well, I like how the throat narrows because when I go in and out of a stitch, I can feel kind of like almost like a gentle kind of pop. And if you crochet when you're not watching, like say you're watching a television show or something like that, you can crochet and just kind of feel the stitches happening. But with this, I'm like, would you be able to feel that? I don't know. Another reason why I like the boy hook was because it's got a sort of a pointy head. And I've always figured that the reason I'm able to slip in and out of the stitches so, so quickly, and even if they're like single crochet, like, you know, a little snugger stitch, is because of the pointed head. And this one, it kind of has a pointy head. It's just not as narrow. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe that won't have that much of an effect. So I was kind of forming my hypothesis about these hooks before I even got to using it. So that is what I found with the, my thoughts about these two hooks. Also, the boy hook is just a little bit longer than the Susan Bates hoods, hook. I didn't know if that's, this would have a factor in my crocheting either. Like if my, my crochet strokes are that much different that it would vary that much more with the Susan Bay hook. I just gave it a try. I started crocheting first with the boy hook and then I cro crocheted with the Susan Bates hook and I gave it a try. I tried putting the boy plunger onto the Susan Bates hook so that I could use my ergonomic handle. And yes, it can work together. The ergonomic handle for the boy hook fits onto the Susan Bates hook. So at least in the gauge that I needed to work with it. So I was, I chose a G hook for both. And at first I started with an H hook, but then I had to switch to G. But either way, the G or the H hook, they both fit into the ergonomic handle, which was a huge plus for me. I'm like, okay, this is a game changer. If the Susan Bates hook fits inside of the ergonomic handle, then now we are like on an even playing field because the only thing that varies now is the head and it if it affects the speed and my crochet style. So first I started chaining with my boy hook and the ergonomic handle put onto the boy hook. And it felt like normal where it kind of, you know, it's gliding in and out and I could feel the little pop of the stitch, which was totally natural for me. And then I gave the Susan Bates hook inside the ergonomic handle. And the first thing I noticed was that the slide of it was really nice. I like I thought I would miss that it, the throat tapers as it approaches the head, but I could still feel the slight pop of the stitch. So like I knew when it was going through the chain and I could probably crochet with this without looking, but I love the glide of it. There's something about the steel that is kind of, I don't know if it's the finish of this particular color, but I really like the way it moved in and out of it. So I was like, uh oh, this is like a game changer because I'm really liking how it's gliding in and out now. So I moved on to the actual crocheting. I'm like, okay, let's see how it's gonna feel once we start crocheting something a little bit more complex than a chain. And I was just, I was loving the glide of the Susan Bates. <laughs> it was so smooth. And then I started to notice tendencies of the way that I hold my crochet project and the yarn. What I noticed about when I crochet is that with these two fingers of my right hand, I hold the project, okay? And I maneuver the project while I hold my crochet hook. So I do this, and then I hold the body of the crochet with these two fingers, and I, I maneuver them. You probably don't even think, even think of it consciously, but this is what holds the hook, and then these two fingers for me, because I use the pencil hold to manipulate the project. And then of course this holds the project as well, and the, the, the yarn feeds through here. 
So while I'm crocheting, I'm noticing that because the Susan Bates inside of the ergonomic hook ends up with a slightly shorter length of the shaft, I don't have to extend these two fingers that much in order to manipulate the project while I'm crocheting. So I have like lots of maneuverability in these fingers because the shaft of the hook sticking out of the ergonomic handle is shorter, which I really liked. So I just kept crocheting. Now I know I like boys, so there was not much convincing in terms of like how efficient I could get with crocheting. It didn't really affect the way that I handled my crochet hook, having crocheted with a different crochet hook for a little bit and then switching back to boy. It was kind of interchangeable, but I really, really like the glide of the Susan Bates. So then I got very curious and I thought, okay, I have to throw in the furls hook to this yarn review because there's no way. Well, first of all, I've been curious about this hook for the longest time because one, it's like, it's the cost, one of the most costly ones of all of them. And I just have to know what it is about this hook that makes it so different and good that people are raving about. So I went ahead and gave the furls hook a try. It came in this nice little box and I took it out of the box. It was like absolutely gorgeous. It looked like an artisan made it like totally beautiful. Love the swirls. I got the swirls one. There's like, I mean, it's etched in what size it is. The head looks so smooth. It's like perfectly straight. It's just beautiful. This is an absolutely gorgeous hook. So I went ahead and I started using it. Through the chain, it was like absolutely no problem. And then I got to crocheting the body of the hat and some of the like more complex stitches. The first thing I have to say about it is that I know why people like this. If you have big hands, it's probably really, really good for you because the head of this crochet hook is so long. So while you're crocheting, like it feels, it feels very sleek. <laughs> I don't know what to say, but like the gliding in and out of it really gets your hand going. Mind you, if you have wrist issues, this might be exhausting for you to crochet with a furls hook. Ergonomic handle. Of course, I can't fit this into an ergonomic handle, so I had to use ergonomic handle the way it is. Now, if you're not highly sensitive to like the ergonomic shape, then this is probably the best hook you can get without having to attach anything to something because it is so nice and wide and you don't slip off of it. And I love the shank, so slim, it glided in and out of the stitch like butter, like a hot knife and butter, I'm not even kidding. But the only thing I found with this hook is the maneuvering got really tiring for my hand because of how long the shaft to the head was. I had to hold it in the thickest part of the hook because I need to use the hook in a place where it's not so slim so my hand doesn't get as exhausted. But because I have to hold it so far away from the head, maneuvering the reach to hold like to manipulate the project and be close to the stitch is a really really far reach from where the head is operating on the project so what would happen is my fingers while i'm crocheting i'm not really thinking about it but my fingers are reaching to try and stabilize the project and these two fingers these two fingers here and my thumb here were getting really tired fast. So my hand was starting to cramp here and my fingers were really, really tired, these two fingers. If I had to change this hook in any way, what would I do? I'd short the shank so that it wouldn't be far, but like that would be if it was custom made for me because that really long glidey feeling is actually quite nice. It's like when you're in a really fast race car and you're on the quarter mile and you get to enjoy the speed of it. <laughs> That's how I would describe this crochet hook. But for me, it didn't quite work because the way I crochet, these two fingers are doing a lot of the work and it was just too far away from the project based on how long the shank was. Now, in terms of cost, Boy and Susan Bates are pretty comparable. In fact, for this furls hook, I could have bought two full packs of the full E to J hooks for what I paid 
for this one for Ol's hook. And plus, Susan Bates is like so easy to get like on Amazon and Boy is easy to get on Amazon as well. The Furls hook I had to order from Straight From Furls. Regardless, this is, this is an expensive hook. <laughs> whether you get the Swirls one, whether you get one of their special editions one or you get one of those like nickel ones with the special handle, you're going to pay quite a bit for it. But if you don't have any ergonomic issues and you just want a nice, really great handle and you don't manipulate the project where you control the project, like you hold the back of the project with these two fingers, this is a fantastic hook. But I probably won't buy this again. I probably use it more for like Instagram photos, like pictures, like where you're working on a project, but you're not actually crocheting with it. This is probably what I would use it for because it's a gorgeous, gorgeous hook. But the cost of it is quite high just to be used as like a photo prop for me. But like I mentioned, it, I could totally understand why people use this hook. So that is my take on the boy versus Susan Bates versus Furls crochet hook. Now's your turn. I would love to hear if you've tried any of these three and what your thoughts are. Do you, are you a pencil holder or are you a knife holder for your crochet hook? And are there any other factors that made you switch from one to another? But just between these three, okay? In my next video, I'll be comparing the Susan Bates and Boy hook with Tulip and Clover. So be sure to stay tuned for the next video and friends. Until then, I hope you have a safe, happy, and healthy handmaking life. Bye friends.